So this is a quick update to let everyone know that YouTube just took down our film from a week ago, Ivermectin For and Against, which is really quite concerning. It was a film made up of clips from three interviews, one pro-Ivermectin campaigner, Tess Laurie, and two critics of the data, Graham Walker, who's an emergency doctor from San Francisco, and Gideon Meyerowitz Katz, who's an epidemiologist and data analyst. In this film, I took care to present both sides of the argument, using my journalistic training to research beforehand, to challenge the guests, put counterpoints to their claims. This deliberately wasn't a commercial for Ivermectin, partly because I wanted to test what would happen. And now we know. We now have an official permanent warning and a notice that if it happens again, we will get a guideline strike that will take us off air for a week. So I believe this was editorially valid, maybe even essential given the stakes. These discussions are being had anyway. They're clearly on matters of public importance, given people are already making decisions based on information they've heard about the drug. Tess Laurie, whether you agree or disagree with her perspective on ivermectin, is a scientist who's been an author for the Cochrane Collaboration, one of the most prestigious medical research organizations. In my view, YouTube has no right to silence her. Her views need to be heard, to be engaged with, and challenged. So there's already been a lot of censorship of the ivermectin story. Pierre Corey's testimony to the Senate was taken down, as was Brett Weinstein's interview with him. There were two reasons I made the film in the way I did, to show both sides. One, because the nature of the echo chambers we build means that nearly everyone was only getting one side of the story. Either it's an unjustly suppressed miracle drug, or it's an unproven treatment with poor data to support it. Of course, I've got my own views on the topic. Anyone would if they spend weeks researching it but I tried to put them aside and make a balanced film that showed both arguments. We've just put the film up on BitChute, so if you haven't seen it, then you can decide for yourself how well I did. The link is in my Twitter on screen now. Also, if you want the deep dive of the research, we put together a big briefing document that I'll link below. The other reason I made the film in this way is that I believe the focus on censorship and free speech around this topic is blurring a really important distinction between the ability to discuss ideas and advocating certain courses of action. The question I was trying to answer, was YouTube banning films because they even talked about ivermectin, censoring all discussion, or were they targeting ones that they thought crossed the line into advising specific treatments? And I still don't know. There's plenty of other popular films on ivermectin on YouTube that haven't been taken down. Dr. John Campbell, for example, has got a million subscribers. His conversation with Tess Laurie has 220,000 views which is four times what our film had, and that film is still up. We've appealed, so it might be too soon to say. I suspect it might get reinstated. But because the decision-making process is so opaque by the likes of YouTube, we may never know why it was taken down or why it gets put up again. Would it be because I'm a journalist? I've got the contact of YouTube's press office somewhere from covering the London Real story. So I've got levers that a lot of other people don't have. Whatever the answer, it's a seriously broken process. Let's say it gets reinstated. What if the film had been made by someone else who did a similar careful job, but who isn't a journalist, doesn't have the same contacts? Would they get the same treatment? It seems highly unlikely. And that in itself is really unfair. We don't know the rules. And maybe they won't reinstate it, in which case it's obviously even more broken. The tech platforms are trying to play the old gatekeeping model of the legacy media but in an even more shoddy and random way, with heavy handed prevention and censorship. And the rise of alternative media means it's never gonna work. The cat is out of the bag, the conversations will happen somewhere, probably with much lower standards, and these bannings just strize and affect the claims and make them even more well known. But at the same time, I believe we should also be quite skeptical of claims of censorship and recognize it's also a powerful tactic that can be used to get attention as we covered on Rebel Wisdom last year when Brian Rose of London Real used YouTube taking down his interview with David Icke to go on a fake free speech campaign and launch a scam digital freedom platform that fooled people into giving him a million dollars. We will not be silenced. We will not be censored. And we will not be stopped. Now is the time to join the resistance and join London Real. The digital freedom platform is happening, all right? It's gonna be in full effect tomorrow. If you wanna be a part of that, go to LondonReal.tv forward slash freedom, become a founding member of this platform. Some people don't get it, all right? And some people do get it. 
Some people want to be counted, and your name will be there etched in stone as someone who helped us fight on the front lines for freedom. Or do you want to be someone who sat back and let others fight for your freedom? That's the question. That he then spent on trying to make himself London mayor. Check out the playlist on this story on the YouTube channel. So I think this may tweak a few people in the comments because free speech absolutism is kind of a religion on YouTube, but I'm not a free speech absolutist. I think with rights like free speech come responsibilities. We can argue about what those are and there's a thin line between censorship and moderation, but unmoderated places generally turn into cesspools and moderation should be more about promoting healthy communication and social norms than banning the worst of it. But I guess that's a topic for another time. Which doesn't mean that the counter arguments that I can already hear people lining up are not valid. Who would you trust to do it? Would it be the thin end of the wedge? But these are questions we need to wrestle with as adults, not reactive contrarians blaming everything on the man. I do believe that there are some forms of misinformation that should be acted on. The example I've given before of Facebook groups where mothers are encouraged to give their kids bleach to cure them of autism. If you can honestly say that if you personally were aware of someone doing this and you had the power to stop it and you wouldn't because of your dedication to free speech, then you've got a stronger stomach than I do. So this is to announce that we are launching our own digital freedom platform. Not really. Blaming the platforms is the easy part. Creating a sense of us and them. As Brian Rose showed, what an easy role that was to play and how he got people to part with their money for his scam. Instead, at least here on Rebel Wisdom, we're going to start asking this question much more clearly. What can we do apart from just attack the big tech platforms for their crappy decisions? What could a better system look like? For example, could all the people who have large platforms and want to bring in some ethical standards and look into controversial topics like ivermectin come up with a code of conduct that we could all sign up to? Can we get some strength in numbers? What would a decentralized solution look like? If you want to join conversations where we talk about all of these kind of topics with our members, we've built our digital campfire as a place where we can have these. So check out our membership options. These films are all made for free. We sustain ourselves off memberships and also our online courses where we teach better sense making. So check out the website and the links below and also join our mailing list if you want to get our newsletter, which is always an epic deep dive into a topic. Last time out was ivermectin. Tomorrow it'll be a deep dive into some of the claims around the vaccines. Oh yes. And thanks for watching.